Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More, it's Leo speaking. Today we continue our journey in learning progressions and we are going to cover how to edit arpeggios and strumming patterns. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. As usual, we are inside AUM, we have an instance of progressions here, which is connecting in this case to pure piano to produce some sounds. And I have also loaded grand stuff, which you can see down here on the bottom right, so that it will help you, it will help us to actually see what is being generated by uh, progressions. I have enabled the uh, host, um, the sync to host, and I also have enabled the uh, pad preview as well. Let's click on uh, generate and hold. So we generate a progressions. Um, I have set, I have really left everything as it is by default when you open up progressions. Now, normally you are on block chords, but let's click on arpeggios to activate the arpeggio. And as you have seen in the previous tutorial, you can choose also a pattern from here. Right, And when you do so, depending here on the right hand side, you have a, a, a number of slots which you can activate. You actually change the pattern which is uh, linked to that particular slot. So for example, we are on slot C, we can say pattern 3. If I move to slot A here, it will say pattern 1, B, pattern 2, uh, C, pattern 3, and so on down to F with pattern 6. But you can change that, of course, as... Uh, um, as I just explained uh, a moment ago, you can change it from here based on the part on the slot which is available. So let's go to slot A. So this is the section where you can edit your arpeggio. So here you have a button which shows you that you are in edit mode arpeggio, but you can change that to go to the strummer like so, even if it's not active. But let's go back now to the arpeggio for now. Here you have the length in terms of eight bits. You can see there are eight here, okay? Here you have this icon, which if you click on it, you can change the output channels for the bass, but also for the chord up and strum as well, which is really um, handy. You can clear the button, clicking on the clear button here and selecting, of course, yes. You can load an additional custom ARP like so. Or you can also save one when you have done and give it a name. In terms of how you create a pattern, it's just very simple. Down here, you have number one to six, which represents uh, uh, represents the note of uh, um, uh, coming from the chord, of course. And um, so you just click on a note and hold. And as you hold, you can move in up and down to change the velocity, or you can move horizontally to change the length. Okay, so it's very simple. So if we do something like this, click and hold. Okay. And then see, I'm going to preview um, the arpeggio, uh, clicking and holding on the first pad. As you can see here on Grand Staff, it has played the first note, E, the second, G, the third, which is a C, and then you repeated the note again going up for the fourth note here, which will be an E, an octave above. And of course, for example, you can continue to go up like that, or you can, for example, come down something like that. So it is an up and down. You can see here on Grand Staff the notes which are uh, produced. Okay, so if you double click on uh, uh, on a column here, it will ask you if you want to clear the column. You can click yes, and it will clear that column. Of course, you can have more than one note playing at the same time, like so. Which is really nice. So let's try again. And of course, remember, you can change the bit divider here if you want to change the speed. Okay, perfect. As I said, you can load, save a pattern. You can clear a pattern, so let's clear it again. But you can also create a random pattern. So if you click on the random button here, you have this window which says randomize pattern. 
of course, and you can choose the complexity and also the note range. So let's say we stick to free and low complexity, then we click on randomize. As you can see, we have a random pattern. Let's, for example, go up uh, range four and we'll include uh, also a repetition of the first note. Well, let's randomize first. There you go. And of course, we can go up to six, like so. And you can change the complexity as well. High. Remember, you can change the number of bits. So, for example, you can say, I have 16. In that case, you probably want to change the bit divider to 4, depending, of course, on the length of the measure that you have active. As you can see, when I double the number of bits, it has repeated uh, the sequence, which I already had in the first 8 uh, um, bits. But, of course, you can change that, like so, randomizing. You have a full randomized uh, uh, pattern for all the 16 uh, bit. Okay, now let's move to the strummer. We click on the strummer here. As you can see, uh, you use the same part of the uh, screen. Here it says edit more strummer, but I could have moved to it as I showed you earlier on. It works in a similar way, but of course you have um, these arrows which are pointing up and down. Okay, let's say that I put a note here. Okay, maybe three notes like so. Then um, I can still clear the, the column there if I click. But if I double click on it instead, oops, sorry, if I click and hold, I have a selection of playing style. At the moment it says black, but I can say downstrom. So we will play downstrom. Okay, click and hold. Uh, I can have muted, pluck, etc., etc. So let's try. So you heard that, uh, um, which was quite interesting, the pluck, uh, muted down strum, strumming. Okay. If you want to hear the difference in terms of the drumming, oh, sorry, of the strum speed, you just act on this dial here. So you can have um, a lot of fun. And it works a similar way. You have your slots um, here, right? And you can load different patterns on the different slots as well. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. And as always, see you next time. Bye.